A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone. This is a no box, no save, no damage playthrough of Resident Evil Remake's Claire A scenario on standard. This is on PS4. Look, man, I'm serious, okay? I saw this with my own eyes. Oh, I believe you, buddy. I believe you. <laughs> Just tell us a story. Tell us a story. Okay, well, it was last Friday night. I was walking home from the bar, and this woman started coming towards me. She was staggering, you know, so I, I figured she was drunk. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, tell us, be honest now, how many drinks did you have? No, man, I, I barely had a buzz on her. Oh, come on. Look, just listen, all right? She got closer, and I got a good look at her. You got to see her eyes, her nose, her whole face. It looked like it was rotting. Yeah. She looked like a corpse, like a walking corpse, man. <laughs> Sounds like my wife. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't been able to sleep since that night. All right, calm down, buddy. Calm down. Just, hey, you got to stay strong, okay? Don't give in to fear out there, right? Yeah, well, you got that right. If you freeze up around these things, they'll sink their teeth in the I should have got somebody. Oh, come on. It's just getting good. So the stipulations for 100% uh, are... Hello? All side packs, all weapons and upgrades, Anybody all files, here? and all Mr. Raccoons. The reason why I'm playing on standard is because Hello? I don't actually know if you get the achievement for all side packs playing on hardcore. And besides that, I wanted to collect everything, okay? and standard just seems like a better difficulty for that. We'll check it out. I've already done no save, no damage on hardcore, so go check out all four scenarios of that later. Excuse me, is everything okay? Uh, stay back, babe. I got this. <laughs> So on standard difficulty, because we're playing at uh, lower DA's difficulty adjustments, DA is like a hidden difficulty adjust system that uh, the game gets harder the better you do at the game. 
Or the game gets easier if you, like, miss more shots, take more damage, stuff like that. But, uh, at the lower DAs, on standard difficulty, uh, zombies will get knocked backwards if you just shoot them in the face. Whoa, don't shoot! Get down! We gotta get out of here. You alright? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. You can thank me later. When we're safe. Holy shit. Have some answers at the police station. Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. You are? Clear. Clear Redfield. Live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop too. Well, it's a good thing we found each other. I don't know what to expect anymore. Attention all citizens, due to the citywide outbreak, you are advised to take shelter at the Raccoon City Police Station. Free food and medical supplies will be provided to everyone in need. Oh my god, this is so unreal. The police station's not much farther. They'll know something. Yeah, but what if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, there's survivors. Big city. There has to be. Looks like we're walking from here.
okay? Yeah, I'm all right. How about you? I can't stay here. It's not safe. So for the initial heading to the RPD Head segment, Gotta keep moving. really nothing to worry about here. Just go directly to the police station. It's like the end of the world. Frequently you're going to see me raise and drop my gun. And uh, the reason for that is because you actually get a very small speed Almost boost there. on the stairs. Just to remind everyone, this is not a speed run. It is a challenge playthrough, but I will still do things so that I don't really waste time either. Avoiding time loss isn't really the same thing as going fast, for the record. So even though this playthrough is done reasonably fast, it's like, don't treat it as a speed run. Main gameplay differences between Claire and Leon. Claire has a lot fewer options for disposing of zombies, like fewer quick decapitations and whatnot. But uh, the general strategy is to try to save up as much handgun ammo as we can for the first boss. So that's the first file you get is the officer's notebook. Uh, Claire also has a file in her inventory that you just get automatically for starting the game. For that first zombie, we're just going to chill on the other side of the desk and wait for him to flop over the desk so that when we exit the room, he will stay stuck in that room whenever we come back through here later. For these zombies over here, we're just going to squeeze on the right side of the locker and go all the way around and under the shutter. Cue cutscene. Obviously, someone taught you well. Yeah. I know how to take care of myself. Come on. <clears throat> so nobody knows what caused this? There's a lot of theories. But all I know for sure is that this place is crawling with zombies. Yeah. It's on me. Hey, hey, keep that on. Just in case. I'm not gonna be around long. Once I find Chris, we're out of here. You're really Chris's sister? Yeah. 
Why? Did you find something? He's on vacation. Europe, I think. Left weeks ago. Vacation? That's... that's great news. Well, I've got more for you. Looks like there might be a way out through this secret passageway. Good. <gasps> hey. Uh, hey, we should probably get you to a hospital. Oh, 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 oh. Forget about me. I can take care of myself. No. Don't be ridiculous. You're gonna need some help. Listen, Claire. Save yourself. So you can see your brother again. Now. You'll probably need this. No, I'm not taking that. You're gonna... Shh. And be careful. If you see one of those things, no matter who they were, you can't hesitate. Take them out if you can. Or you run. <laughs> so the knife itself I won't actually be using that much, but uh, some generally good uses for the knife, especially on console, are really just to poke zombies to make sure that they are dead. Or just like wake them up if they're not. And uh, also as a defense weapon. The uh, knife exploit that is uh, commonly used on bosses in speedruns will not be used against bosses in this playthrough. On the PC version, if you play at an unlocked frame rate, then the damage from the knife actually scales infinitely. And you can kill bosses generally really, really fast. Also, that uh, dead body had Marvin's name tag on it. It's kind of weird. Record of events is the second file we pick up in the operation room. So carrying over from the uh, Leon A playthrough, if you saw that before, um, I'm trying to pick up all the files across every scenario. I may miss one or two in this playthrough. Same with Mr. Raccoons, but they all unlock globally across the save. So technically this is uh, part two of four of a larger 100% walkthrough. Poked him with my gun, I should have poked him with my knife. Sometimes maybe one out of every ten shots, you'll get a critical shot that'll blow off a zombie's head. Pretty good. We're going to board up this window here. Otherwise, we're going to have to deal with two zombies busting through the windows. There's some handgun bullets on the female zombie over here. But in general, just uh, try to isolate every zombie and... Very slowly use focus shots on each of them in order to do maximum damage. You get about a 35% uh, damage bonus by letting the crosshair close completely over the target. Rather, they're called focus shots. The spade key is up here. And we're going to return to the main hall through the western office because there's a lot of files in there and also a side pack. Decided to go ahead and get rid of this one too, even though she'll wake up later. The reloading time for Claire's revolver is also really, really slow. And going into the uh, Western office in order to get her upgrade for her revolver is 
pretty much mandatory for every playthrough as Claire. Do limbs crit as well? Sometimes the number of shots to remove one varies. Uh, not exactly sure if those can be counted as a crit. But that is correct that the number of shots for a limb to get dismembered does vary. Operation report on the table here. Rookie's first assignment on Leon's desk. Little hazing ritual. NED and MRG are the solutions to open up the desk. Then combining with the revolver, so now the uh, reloading speed will be significantly faster. Upon reaching the uh, stairs to the main hall right there, we actually have to uh, go back and kill this guy. The code to the safe, by the way, was 9157. Shit. In case it wasn't evident. Generally, I use flame rounds for taking out zombies late game, but for now, we're just uh, using the handgun to sort of thin out some of the earlier hordes. There you are. Come here. What is it? Take a look. Oh my god, he made it! You know him? Yeah, it's Leon. Uh, Kennedy, I think? Oh, uh, the rookie. Thought he looked familiar. You can make it to that courtyard, the second floor east side. Okay. Thanks, Marvin. I'm on it. You know, it's funny, I wonder why Leon is just waiting right there. It would have been nice to play through Leon's own RPD segment. Leading up to the police station. The code to the lock here is 6211, and you will get an extended magazine for the JMB handgun, but that's a lot later. Travel guide on the table there. It turns a museum into a police station. An art gallery guide and also the weapon storage key card. meeting like this. Are you all right? Police chopper, it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm fine. I take it you don't have the key. No, I don't. It's good to see your face, though. How are you holding up? I am hanging in there. Hell of a night, huh? Yeah. You find your brother? I did, actually. He's... Just me thinking can't get any worse. Leon, you should get going. Don't worry about me. Just get yourself to safety. No, Leon, seriously, they're getting through the fence. Please, just go. We're gonna make it. Both of us. Handgun bullets here. 
Also, the bulk cutters, which are going to be requisite for opening four doors. Actually, no, three doors. I'm gonna crack this one open here in order to grab these bullets, grab the fuse. Grab the valve handle, which we need in order to get to the star's office. We also got uh, blue gunpowder earlier, combining with uh, Claire's white gunpowder in order to make acid rounds. the right side wall over here to get around that body so then there's two zombies on the way back to the operation room and because we're playing on standard it's easy to just shoot them in the face and knock them back and get around at harder DAs like at higher DAs you would have to use uh, you would have to use leg shots in order to stun them and knock them backwards So now we got the first half of the detonator and also taking a flash grenade here. Going to open up a couple of these lockers over here too. Gonna open up 106 and 109 because there's a roll of film that we need for one of the files and also handgun ammo. Gonna be using the uh, flame rounds on the M79 to take out zombies mostly. The code to this <laughs> is obviously not BAP, it's, it's CAP. Get a lot of flame rounds out of the out of the deal here. Take some blue gunpowder over here. While the liquor is uh, eating the zombie over here, we're just gonna run right by him and go directly into the star's office. because his aggro will be reset whenever we re-enter the hallway. Combine the white gunpowder with the uh, blue gunpowder to get acid rounds. Got flame rounds here too. Gonna leave that grenade there. Um, I only picked up the uh, flash grenade there, so to start dedicating precisely one inventory space to flash grenades. And basically, I'm trying to pick up the flash grenades in order of the times that I actually do visit the rooms. So in order of frequency, really. And uh, the most frequent number of times would be better reserved for picking them up later in the game. So I don't even pick up that flash grenade until RPD-3. The uh, solution to the unicorn statue is fish, scorpion, water to get the unicorn medallion. Just a 
quick little headshot there. We can leave all these zombies in here alive still, but... It's uh, probably safer in general to just get, go ahead and get rid of them. Zombie staying up there, we want to go ahead and knock him off the ceiling. Just go ahead and kill him, because sometimes he'll come to life if... Rather, when the liquor spawns. Some guy's scribblings on the table there, along with our second side pack. We're going to exit and re-enter the room. In doing so, the bookshelf will not fall in front of the door. Also, my audio is a little weird because uh, after the latest Adobe update, I find that all of my audio tracks are not properly merging correctly. Whenever I go to encode my video, it's kind of weird. For the second statue, the Maiden statue, it is... Uh, Lady Arrow Snake to get the Maiden Statue or the Maiden Medallion. We're going to get our uh, Acid Rounds ready and pop that liquor in the face. Uh, acid Rounds are a hard stun against liquors. So Claire just gets to dodge around that liquor for free. Got our friend Analingus over there. He is going to town on that ass right there. Also, one thing that I uh, wanted to, one piece of attention to detail that I appreciate that I'm not sure if I should appreciate or not is. Uh, Some of the zombies, you can actually see the uh, the shiny part on where they shit themselves before they died. For the third statue, it's Lion, Herb, Bird. To get the Lion Medallion. Throw away the uh, spade key to get that. And then we're done with RPD-1. We should have at least uh, 60 handgun bullets on the way to fight the first boss. Yeah, forget about Red Dead Redemption's horse testicles descending and retracting in the winter. We got zombies with shit on their pants. That is some real attention to detail. Looks like it leads underground. Good. We can get out of this hellhole. Hey, Marvin! Guess what? I think I found a way out! Marvin, come on. Let's get you out of here. Let's go. Are you okay? Oh, no. I... Just go. Save yourself. Come on. It's bad. We gotta get you to hospital Please, now. Claire. We both know how this is going to end. Get out of the city. I can't just leave you here. Claire, please, go. Do this for me. Okay. Hey, 
and Marvin. Thank you. Some flame rounds over there, some gunpowder right here, which uh, I actually combined with the extra gunpowder that I got on the uh, third floor so that I can get some, uh, a little bit of extra ammo. Because we're just going to be using the handgun for the duration of Hello? the first boss fight. Hello? I won't budge. I promise. Do you need help? Here, you can take my hand. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. You need help. Why? He's right behind you. What? So in general, the idea with this fight is to just try to shoot him as much as possible. You can try to target the eye if you wish, and you'll save a few extra bullets by doing so. But uh, because I'm playing on console, I didn't want to like uh, focus too much on firing at the eye because this fight would take a long time regardless. All right, so. It's at this point, after he starts transforming, that he's going to start running after you, start being a lot more aggressive. But his eye is also exposed. But uh, the idea is that we already have enough handgun bullets to be able to just keep firing center mass. Also, if he grabs you, this actually does not count as damage because it causes zero points of damage. Pretty much any defense item, any defense item animation, any animation that triggers the use of a defense item causes zero damage. As long as you have a defense item, of course. It's pretty ballsy with a lot of this. A lot of close calls this fight. But uh, fortunately, his pipe swings are his slower attacks. But when he does that overhand pipe swing down, then that's actually a really good time to just unload into him. There he goes again, but I started my reload too late, so I didn't have the opportunity to actually fire any shots into his eye that phase. At this point, he should be really, really low on HP. Should be almost dead. 
But center mass is, in my opinion, the best way to deal with fighting this guy. Just because it's more consistent than trying to go for the eye. I just need you to lower that ladder for me. Will you help me find my mom? Your mom is down here? I think so. I hope so. Yeah. Of course. I'll help you. So now that the fight's over, we can uh, run around and collect some ammo. Got some handgun bullets. More handgun bullets over here. One hand grenade and a third box of handgun bullets. So right about now we're going to start stocking grenades for the end of the game. I always save my hand grenades for the uh, final boss Sinclair specifically. Otherwise flash grenades you can use as defense items and do pretty good. My parents are gone. It's just me and my brother. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. It means we've got something in common, and that's a good thing, right? Sure, this is the way. This is how my mom took me last time. Sherry? I've been looking everywhere for you, Sherry. Brave little girl, leave your house in the middle of this mess. On the ground, hands behind your head. You can't be serious. On the ground, now. Sherry? Tie her hands. Why are you doing Shut this? up. Tie her. Okay then. You tie her up now or she dies. <laughs> 
What's this all about? Child endangerment, for starters. Sherry. Come here. What are you gonna do to her? None of your fucking business. If you hurt her, I swear to God, my brother is stars and I will fuck her. Sherry, get over here. What's your name? What's your fucking name? Claire! Sherry, you come with me now, or say goodbye to Claire. Okay, okay, I'll go! You better be taking me to my mom. Absolutely. Don't listen to him, he's full of shit. Stop hurting her, please! Don't tell me how to do my job. Stop! Let me go! Let me go! Obviously, nobody talks you matter. We'll fix that. Go, yes, we will. Let me go! Let me go! I'll get you, you fucker! Stay safe, Sherry. Okay. Key card first, and then that asshole gets what's coming to him. Claire's basement has liquors, so we gotta be a little bit stealthy in some sections. But uh, before we go down into liquor territory, we're gonna run into the firing range here, grab these flame rounds. There's a second Mr. Raccoon pedestal over here. Now you might be wondering why I'm just shooting the empty pedestals, and the reason for that is so that I can show you where the Mr. Raccoons are. How else are you going to know? So next up, we're going to start walking once we enter the kennel here. The liquors are feasting on these deceased canines over here. Next up, walk into this area, the morgue, pull this open. Grab a flash grenade. Push that body halfway back in. In doing so, he actually will not wake up. I'm uh, trying to pull the slab out just a little bit more every time because if you do the bare minimum then the zombie will actually not wake up and you can pick up the diamond key but I haven't really had much luck getting that trick to work the last few times I've played this. So a little bit about liquors, uh, they only react if you touch them or if you run. They can smell you, and they will like slowly plot on over to you, but just don't run, just don't touch them. If you come close to touching them, then exit and re-enter the room, and they will all go back to some predetermined positions, which will make it easier for you to walk around them. So there's a diamond key, and of course I failed the trick. He still woke up. We're going to slowly walk in and we're going to slowly hug the left, but uh, the liquor, the liquor found us, liquor spun around too early, I hesitated, but upon exiting and re-entering the liquor will actually go up to the walls, so this is probably a much easier dodge to do, is just let them go on the walls and then just walk, walk around them that way. We still have to walk whenever we exit this room because we got uh, Peter Parker on the ceiling over here, as you can see.
gonna head back into the firing range to pick up the uh, lunchbox over here and use the diamond key. Just use it, but not actually uh, collect the contents of the room. So we'll open the lunchbox, check the key, turn it around. Opens the trunk to the car. And upon doing so, we get the JMB handgun. Which only has one upgrade, and that's the extended magazine. Must be where that guy came from. Bastard is the pol police chief. And there's a little document about the police chief right there. There's a shoulder stock for the M79. But we're not going to pick that up yet because that will make the M79 take two inventory slots instead of one. And that will absolutely choke our inventory. Grab the email from Birkin on the chief's desk. Taxidermy log. We're going to leave the uh, white gunpowder here for later. Grab the maintenance report sitting next to the picture frame with the heart key in it. We use the heart key to get out of the office and there's a Mr. Raccoon statue where I just shot. Plain view. Next up, gonna run downstairs and use the board I just picked up to lock out this dum dum over here. Then use the heart key. One very important thing to no box runs, which I should have mentioned earlier, by the way, is uh, obviously don't pick up every single thing you see, but also you have to be very uh, judicious in picking up keys versus when you use them. Really, I could just come back through this whole area later, but I mostly wanted to come through here to use the heart key so that I could get it out of my inventory faster. Upon picking up the flash grenades in that locker there, that will complete a single three grenade stack. So at this point, it's either start using those grenades oh no. or wait a while before picking up more. But right about now is also when we want to start using the grenade launcher to kill zombies because we're going to have to start dealing with Mr. X pretty soon.
Had to combine that in order to get this large gear right here. And go ahead and unlock this door because we can't grab the uh, we can't grab the uh, cube conductor in the room over there just yet. We gotta wait until later. Claire actually cannot visit the rest of the RPD until we solve this puzzle. So this has got to come first. Switch this over here. Claire can't actually get away with shooting this zombie. But uh, this... Dickhead over here is just blocking my path, so... Decided to fire off a quick acid round to get around him. Because he was not part of our ammo budget. And we have about... If mixed correctly, we have about like 10 acid rounds left over that we can use. But we don't want to use acid rounds in general either. We have to save those acid rounds for uh, G3. That's also how you get the achievement for shooting off Mr. X's hat, is just take careful aim while he lifts up the helicopter, then just pop him in the noggin. Gonna go ahead and combine the uh, clip we got earlier with the JMB. The next objective is to get the jack handle. We've been using the heart key as much as we have up to this point so that we can get it out of our inventory with the next key turn. And the last heart key door is going to be this way. I'm running on the left side of these desks here, by the way, so that the zombie sleeping at the desk doesn't wake up. There's liquors in this room now, so we have to walk through it. Even when Mr. X is following us, we can still walk fast enough to avoid him. We just have to make sure that we got enough of a running start to be able to do it. QED right now. So we're going to run back this way. There would be a... There would normally be an ink, an ink ribbon here on Hardcore, but combining the uh, white gunpowder we got in the basement earlier with this blue gunpowder over here to get that out of our inventory, now we can exit. Once uh, he comes reasonably close to us, we just bait right, dodge left, walk past this one. Mr. X is about to follow us. Still staying on the right side of the staircase. I ran this way because I wasn't sure if I had killed Analingus earlier or not. Use the jack there and slide that to the right. If it was properly set up earlier, which I should have mentioned earlier, by the way, setting up those shelves early will make it so that you only have to do one shelf push while you're running away from Mr. X. So that is some very useful safety information. I'm pretty bad at uh, remembering to give out those specific details early enough in the commentary, so I apologize for that. And as it turns out, I uh, forgot something. What I forgot, I'm actually not sure. Oh, right. I, I actually know what I forgot now. So I had to lure Mr. X upstairs and I ran this way so that I could use the uh, diamond key here.
Quick question from Twitch chat. Hey, Carsey, how many steps did you take in this run? There's a trophy for 14,000 steps. Maybe you can add this to the description. I actually honestly have no idea how many steps I took this run, but I'm pretty sure it was less than 14,000. Pretty much all of my steps are less than 14,000 in just about every run that I do. Really, knowing key item routes is all you need in order to get the 14,000 step achievement. It's super easy. Using the flame rounds to uh, get rid of these guys and also use up the uh, excess flame rounds that I have in my inventory. One in the chamber, ten in an inventory slot is your ideal amount of uh, ammo as far as uh, balancing between saving ammo and making sure you have enough space in your inventory later. At least that's how I usually do it for Claire. I'm going to pick up the repair plan on the table there. And take the small gear. And uh, I don't know why I didn't use the large gear there. Actually, I know why. It's because I have very bad short-term memory and sometimes shit like that happens. So after using the small gear, we're going to take a quick detour in here, take the large gunpowder. There's a Mr. Raccoon right there. It can be gotten as both Leon or Claire. I run this way and... I don't even know why I ran this way. Actually, this is... This is this is very much the run where I forgot to uh, where I forgot to grab the cube conductor again, and I start to realize that as soon as I go for the other cube conductor. Well, that's okay. If that's the case, then I'll just focus this commentary on how to deal with Mr. X, how to merc Mr. X. So that door at the far end of the main hall is locked. Mr. X will try to go through it, but upon realizing it's locked, he's going to turn right around. Which means that uh, Mr. X can actually be a right pain in the ass to deal with right here. Because we want Mr. X to go back toward the library instead of going toward that uh, storage room where we need him to go. And of course Mr. X cannot follow us into this room. So we just have to keep uh, going in and out and hopefully uh, get a roll where he'll move the other way. But if not, you know, I'm just going to pop him in the head, get him to come this way. And uh, hopefully when we close the door and the game, like his uh, his pathing disengages, he won't uh, move towards move towards that area again. But if not, you know, we're just gonna keep shooting him in the head. And that's more than, that would be more than enough time to deal with him. I always recommend watching my runs with headphones, by the way, or even playing this game with headphones in general, because it's easier to gauge Mr. X's position based on uh, no solicitors, Mr. X. It's easier to gauge his position based on uh, based on audio, so you can tell whether he's in front of you, whether he's behind you, whether he's moving left, moving right. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. Every time that happens. Seriously? Okay, now he's down. He actually can't hit us while he's down like that. Okay, better move it. We'll go ahead and unlock this door. And then we'll head over to the uh, cube conductor. There's a Mr. Raccoon right there. Is baiting the combo from Mr. X in a no damage run just too risky? Yes. You don't really bait a combo from Mr. X though, you just bait an individual punch. It's always like a haymaker. I personally do not recommend doing that if your goal is to avoid damage. 
In a speed run, absolutely, but this is a no damage run. The point is to avoid damage, and that's just too risky. So, Mr. X has this pinned over here. It's about now that I forget that I need the other cube conductor. So oh, now we're just going to go over here, and what direction is he going to go? Other than towards us. Directly towards us, so we're just going to murk him around here. Head back to the library and solve the rest of the puzzle. It's right about here that I realize, wow. <laughs> you can just see me like, wait, where's the cube conductor? Oh, I didn't solve the stupid puzzle. I only solved the puzzle halfway before going to grab the large gunpowder and the Mr. Raccoon, so. This is why I this is why I'm a terrible speedrunner. But it's okay, because I get to show you what you should do if you fuck up. Just like I did. That worked. Does a shot like that against the empty Mr. Raccoon affect DA? And the answer is yes. It would actually lower my DA because I missed a shot. Ah, there he is again. No, Mr. X, I, 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 I'm not going to upvote your Jordan Peterson post on r slash atheism. Get out of my way. All it takes is for Mr. X to take one step towards the library, and that's seriously enough room for us to be able to make it back to the storage room over here and get us on the way back into Chief Iron's office. Combining the large gunpowder with the gunpowder B will give us a lot of acid rounds. Also, there is a liquor on that ceiling over there. Decided to go ahead and grab the jewelry box. Pick up the confiscation report and there's another uh, blue gunpowder right there which we can combine with the white gunpowder in Chief Iron's office. I should have grabbed it, but I didn't think about it. But you know, you can actually cheese this liquor over here. After you bust through the window, you can just jump right on through and uh, get rid of them. Just two acid rounds, I think. Wow, free. But we still gotta be careful because Mr. X is still walking around. Mr. X is actually a little bit like the, uh, the director AI in Alien Isolation, now that I think about it. I actually saw on, a, uh, on an episode of Boundary Break, I think it was, 
what uh, what happens, like what Mr. X does off camera. And basically the game sort of acts as like a direct, as a bit of a director AI, kind of like an alien isolation, wherein the parts of the RPD map just, uh, just despawn, just fade out, right? And uh, Mr. X just suddenly, just suddenly warps toward the nearest Lotus room. The nearest loaded room. Lotus. Is that a word? Nearest loaded room at like light speed. And that's basically the game's way of telling Mr. X where you are. Probably avoid that for now. Probably pick it up later. I don't know. Hello? Good to see you again, Claire. We've got unfinished business. In the neighborhood, you'll find it. Sherry, all right? For now. I swear, you bastard, if you hurt her. Stupid kid. If you just hadn't dropped that fucking thing, I could let you go. Don't worry, Sherry. It'll be all over soon. There has to be a way out of here. So in order to get under here, get out of here and under par time, we're going to examine the back of this absolutely fucking ugly doll. Use this block, and then we're going to stick Block number one into the uh, third slot over here, and then just uh, shuffle them afterwards, or just like line them all up correctly. Really, the whole trick is block number one goes in slot three, and that's the only unrandomized part of the puzzle. Everything else is just rotating the puzzle. So now we're out of here. The uh, first orphanage document, diary, Sally's diary, is sitting right there. Pull this back. There's another diary Atlas sitting the on the table right over here to the left, which I did not grab for some reason. Maybe I grab it as Claire later. Oh no, it's him. But I do specifically recall grabbing that in either this run or my Claire B run, so. There's Blank's diary. And. Then we're gonna grab the key here. Q cutscene. Where you going, Sherry? I told you to stay put. You need to learn to listen. Leave me alone. Just please. Time to teach some manners. Uh. Ah! Oh! You little bitch! You're gonna pay for this! Ah, oh, you little shit! You hear? So funny! 
Sorry! Go away! There's Tom's diary. Help! Somebody, please! You stupid bitch! That's a dead end! Man, if you've done this section, like, over a hundred times, it's really boring. I wish there was a way to skip it. It's all over now! Doors locked! Where are you? Show yourself! I know you're in here! The longer it takes me to find you, the worse it's gonna be! We gotta nest ourselves in here while we wait for irons to trip over. <clears throat> under the table here next and uh, just wait because all you got to do from here is just wait for the next cutscene Good to see you again, Claire. We've got unfinished business. What are you talking about? Don't waste my fucking time! Bring me the pendant, or Sherry dies. The pendant? What do you need it for? Do you want the girl to die? Fine. Where are you? The orphanage. The orphanage? Where is that? In the neighborhood. You'll find it. Sherry, all right? For now. I swear, you bastard, if you hurt her. 
Are you serious? Damn it! So now we have the Just parking you permit. Wait, asshole. Could have definitely mixed up some more acid rounds if I'd even considered grabbing the blue gunpowder. But whatever, hindsight's 2020. Anyhow, picked up the submachine gun rounds sitting on the desk in Iron's office. Did that as late as I could, of course, because we didn't want our inventory choked while we were running away from Mr. X. Would have had to got rid of the submachine gun rounds and waste everything anyhow if it happened that way. So really, I probably just shouldn't have even picked up those submachine gun rounds at all. So to swap back in the flame rounds and get rid of that one acid round. We're actually going to have a lot of acid rounds by the end of the game, so it's like not don't need to worry if we discard like one or two. Just to be able to hold on to that film there. I was just looking around making sure that there wasn't a liquor. Is there any point to using the stock on the M7, M79? Yes, and the answer for that is because it uh, it's a tighter trajectory. Allowing you to fire the grenades at higher accuracy at longer range. Which is the reason why I grab the stock for the M79 every time. But actually, now that I think about it, you probably don't actually need it. At least for the routes that I use, I probably just didn't even need it. Aside from dealing with zombies. Because the, uh, because the hurt box on those grenades is really wide. So even if you're, uh, even if the zombie is, like, not completely in the circle, whenever you fire the grenade launcher, the grenade will like more than likely fun. hit, so... When I got the... Got the photo, got the upgrade, so we're good to go. I've also got a lot of handgun bullets for the JMB, so we're going to just uh, kill everything in sight. Does being on the periphery of the explosion lower the damage from the nade launcher? I'm assuming you're talking about splash damage. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's direct damage, and then there's the aggravated damage from the flame rounds. But it also depends on... It also depends on whether that enemy is weak to flame rounds or acid rounds. The JMB is, like... This is pretty much the only use that I ever actually get out of the JMB for all of my no damage runs. This is shooting down these dogs. Oh, I missed. And if we miss, we gotta get out of the way. We gotta head back so that whenever the dog charges at us, we got a gate in between him and us. We can just keep shooting. Asshole. 
I think he's going this way. So that's all three dogs that we killed. Just that third dog spawns in a weird place. Not even we're sure where he is on the map, like when he spawns in. I think he spawns in like uh, once you reach a certain point on the map, he just like sort of spawns behind one of the cars. These three dogs over here, we are completely protected, just chilling in the basketball court. Which as you can see, this is where they uh, this is where they stuck all of the uh, all of the going to the RPD section from Resident Evil 2 Classic, it's all right here. The staircase down, the dumpster. Basketball court. Trying to take advantage of the uh, hit scan here in order to be able to shoot the dog. Gonna run backwards and eventually the dog is uh, gonna try to track us again. He's just gonna jump over. Trying to aim up to see if he'll uh, come after us. But actually he just runs around, jumps over that way. There's Mr. Raccoon right there. Oh, please. Oh, no. Forget this guy, just run around him after he's downed. We're never returning to this area. That's gotta be the orphanage. Hang on, Sherry. Hello? I have the pendant! Sherry? Sherry, are you here? Hey, would you look at that? I got the achievement. There's a letter from the director right there, and uh, some submachine gun rounds just chilling in the laundry basket there. Dude, the whole orphanage subplot is really, really sick, though. I don't mean sick good, I mean like... I mean sick, like, as in sick to my stomach sick. As in they used children as guinea pigs. Uh, your fault. What? It took too long. What happened? Uh, oh god. Uh, get, get off me! Uh, oh my god! Jesus Christ!
right? Can you hear me? Claire? Claire, you have to get up. He's going to get us. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up. Wake up. Open your eyes. Hold still. Not infected. Sherry? Where's Sherry? Sherry. Sherry's fine. Do you know Sherry? It's an impressive display of strength. What happened to her? We have to assess the situation. Who are you? I'm Claire. I didn't foresee this. Excuse me. Where is she? Hello? What? Where oh, she? Annette. Tell me, what happened to William? I don't know. Who's, who is that? The creature responsible for this. Can you help me find Sherry? Seems to be evolving much faster than expected. Where are you going? Look, I don't have time to play 20 questions. Everything's under control. I need to find Sherry. My daughter is not your concern. <laughs> Sherry's daughter? So that is a missable document in this run, by the way, is the about G right there. It's actually pretty easy to miss. There's also some magnum rounds in the very same room as the document and those submachine gun bullets that I picked up. Sherry, can you hear me? And upon jumping down these two spots right here, we will never be able to go back to pick those up. Ow, I'm gonna smell like shit. So just make sure that you get all that. You don't immediately encounter a G-mutant here with Claire like you do with Leon, so don't gotta worry about them quite so soon. But from this point on, about the only time we want to pick up handgun bullets is to uh, refill our handguns for whatever reason. So while this zombie is waking up, we're gonna rush. We're gonna rush him and grab the flame rounds because he actually can't bite us while he's getting up like that. And uh, after he fully gets up, is the earliest frame that he'll actually be affected by a flash grenade, which is why I wait before throwing the flash grenade. Because if you throw it too early, then that zombie is going to have full awareness and he's gonna come out. He's gonna come after us. Decided to get rid of the knife there so I can pick up more submachine gun ammo. What is this? Sherry, I told you I cannot leave huh? here until my work is done. That's what you always say. Sherry? Why didn't you stay in the house? It was safe there. Hey, Sherry! Uh, I was scared. Those things were everywhere, and... You should have called the police. That's what we taught you. Uh, I did, but nobody came, and you didn't answer your phone, so... Sherry, uh, I don't have time for this. Uh, 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 oh, no. Sherry! Sherry, I'm coming! Hold on, Sherry. I'll be right... Right there.
so the T-shaped handle over here, we have to get rid of something in our inventory in order to be able to pick it up. I opted for these extra <laughs> submachine gun rounds. Actually, no, I opted for that, I guess. Because I only ever use the flame rounds on zombies anyhow. And I thought I'd try to... Uh, keep the... Uh, submachine gun ammo for dealing with the... Uh, slighty boys in the sewers. So the uh, solution to the safe over here is 8 and upon opening it we can combine the reinforced frame with the SLS to be able to load 357 magnum rounds. Just one flame round each is enough to take out these zombies. Then we're going to use another flame round on this guy over here. I decided to wait to pick up that last grenade over there until I'm about done with the sewers because there are two more side packs that we can pick up. But I had to be uh, a little careful before triggering the slidey boy to come out of his tunnel over here. rounds there. Pop the zombie on the ground there. Just get him out of the way. Grab the side pack, then grab the roll of film, which we need before we head back into the RPD for the third and final time. This is actually a pretty good use case for the uh, stock on the grenade launcher, actually. Just to sort of uh, touch up a little more on the uh, subject of the grenade launcher. I'm going to use some 357 ammo over here to take out this G-Mutant. The reason I decided to take out this G-Mutant here is for uh, inventory purposes because we wouldn't have had enough inventory, enough inventory spaces to be able to pick up the key to get back to the RPD, so We've got to fight the G-Mutant directly. And we also got to pay very close attention to how many bullets we fire. And he pops out of the water again. And this is where I uh, go into my inventory and equip a grenade just in case. Because grenades will actually allow you to get right around the G-Mutant. If you use those as a defense item. Versus uh, flash grenades or anything else. Flash grenades or knives. If you try to use a flash grenade or a knife then it won't allow you to get around the G-Mutants so easily. But you also need a little bit of room to run around. You gotta kinda clip around him so that uh, his arm actually can't reach you. But yeah, if you use a flash grenade or a knife on the G-Mutant, then you get pushed a little backwards. 
which is a problem if you're trying to use a defense item to get around the boss, or get around the enemy, rather. So this is our second to last uh, use of the T-shaped bar. Got one inventory slot free. Really, you should use the T-shaped bar on the other side of this uh, area here to open up the other uh, door leading to the save point. Don't be a dumb dumb like me. Doesn't matter too badly, though. Because there's still plenty of inventory spots to work with. Oh, actually, as it turns out, I uh, did wind up using the T-shaped bar. I don't know, this is like my second or... This is like my second attempt at this. Whenever I do a uh, no-save, no-damage run, I generally don't reset. I just, like, keep trying until I take fewer and fewer hits until I actually get the no-damage run. It's just easier for me that way. So sometimes my uh, so sometimes my route is a little shaky. And I just like don't think of certain things. Sometimes I'm uh, doing a little bit of extra routing on the fly. Now we'll head back to the uh, area with the uh, with the rook chess piece where we killed all the zombies a second ago. <laughs> we're, we're headed back to that area. We're going to use the key again, and then we're going to head back into the RPD. But I forgot one. Take a wide arc around him. Poke him really quick. Of course, he's not dead. You bastard. I don't think the JMB actually has a discernible crit rate. I've never actually seen the JMB crit off a zombie's head. So we're going to combine the gunpowder with the uh, large gunpowder here. The white gunpowder with the large gunpowder here. <sighs> then we can push this. Take the elevator up, grab these magnum rounds, and unlock this gate here, which will take us into the the uh, sewage treatment facility over here, connecting us directly back into the RPD. I always thought the JMB was an odd choice. Like, why two handguns? Well, the second handgun has 100% accuracy and does not have focus shots, nor does it have crits. 
it's really all in the accuracy, which is why the JMB, which is where the JMB's strength lies. So it's good at taking down fast, at taking down fast, uh, smaller, fast moving enemies, rather. So now I'm picking up the red book, which you saw me kind of sort of try to go for a pickup, but didn't actually pick up earlier. Then we're going to head into the room where we got the weapons upgrade key card. I see. I guess I should have been using it all this time, lol. Um, I mean, it's good for dogs. That's about it. Otherwise, I'd recommend using focus shots and using uh, the uh, grenade launcher with flame rounds on zombies. At least the requisite zombies that you have to kill. JMB can decapitate zombies? I haven't actually seen it happen. Maybe it has a really, really, really low crit rate, and I just haven't seen it yet. So we're going to examine the scepter, the toy scepter, clear the button, use the gem on the box. We got the stars badge. We'll go into the uh, diamond key door, which goes into the uh, laundromat over here. The laundry room. We're just gonna slowly walk on through. Get around that uh, Get around that liquor. Just walk. Don't touch. Don't run. We'll head upstairs here. And the locker code over here is DCM. I always like to wait until here to open up this locker because it's always either magnum rounds or submachine gun bullets. Neither of which we have at this stage in the game. Medicinal benefits of herbs, sitting on the table over here. Then we're gonna go develop these two films over here, especially the hiding place film. We gotta develop the hiding place film. Some extra handgun bullets here, just to load into the handgun for shooting more Mr. Raccoons. Now that we got the hiding place photo, we can grab the portable safe, portable safe instructions, and uh, make our way back to the star's office. Slowly walk back to the, oh! Carsey, you idiot! You weren't supposed to run, that's what happens when you run! But it's okay, because uh, actually, I needed to uh, do a thing anyhow. Now that I had the other uh, safe, the other portable safe. I'll slowly round the corner and then we will open this door. Get around the liquors down here. In order to uh, solve the puzzle here, what I usually like to do is uh, assign numbers 1 through 8 to the buttons 
and whenever I s and just like keep trial and erroring the whole thing. So let's see, uh, six five three one six five. Okay, three six five. Whatever. You get the idea. <laughs> just keep just keep shouting out just keep shouting out the numbers until you get it. Man, I can't even follow I can't even follow that fast. Okay. One didn't work. Three didn't work. Two didn't work. So none of those are in sequence. Okay, so two four. Two four one. Two four one. Two four one until we find the next one. Two four one. Okay, so it's seven two four one now. Seven two four one. Seven two four one. No no eight two four one. Eight two four one seven. <laughs> three eight two no no it's three eight two four one, you fucking dummy. Okay, come on. Now I now I just lost it. Okay. Eight two four one seven. Okay. Three eight two four one seven. Okay. Oh man, I got mixed up bad on this one, didn't I? Come on, you can do it. Three eight two four one seven. Four one, come on. Two four one. God damn it, pass Carsey. Solve the fucking puzzle. <laughs> you suck at this game. I don't usually get mixed up like this. Obviously, it'd just be easier to write down what uh, button corresponds to what. Solve it in the reverse order. But now we got all the now we got all the buttons. So we're gonna unlock the rest of this. 106. No, no, no. 106. Oh, 106 was already open from way earlier. So 103. Then we can do 102 for gunpowder. And then 203, now that we have both of those buttons in order to get the other side pack, and 208. Grab that. Grab that. Grab the roll of film. Then we can open this up over here and grab the flame rounds and... Grab the hip pouch, the storage locker terminal memo, and then walk this way. Uh, for some reason, the liquor isn't here anymore. It might be because we're playing Claire, so I ran and aggroed the liquor, and he just like sort of shuffled his position back when we were uh, getting the jack handle earlier. That could be it. Pick up the internal memo. And then the training rookie film. Another flash grenade we can pick up there. The one that we left eons ago. I also usually like to unbox the uh, thing that was in Wesker's desk. Take 
the USB dongle key back. But upon unboxing this, we get a high capacity magazine, which we can combine immediately with a submachine gun. Letter to STARS members. Then we gotta go down one more time in order to get these last two files. Just remember, always walk, never run. <laughs> now we can walk by that zombie because we're never headed back to this area ever again. Headed back to the main hall. And uh, also I generally never use the uh, Magnum except on uh, zombies anyway. So these guys just get fucking trash now. We'll reload the handgun. Then pick up the needle cartridge. There's a zombie over there, still trying to poke his head through the window. But he's a fucking dummy, so fuck him. run back in here to grab another flash grenade just uh, as a uh, just for collateral in case we need to use it on G-Mutant and now we can exit and head back into the sewers Pick up the grenade, retract the USB. That opens up. Now we got the suppressor, which we can combine with the uh, with the Mac 11. And head back down this elevator into the sewers again. Jesus. 
So now that we have the Mac 11 and we have a lot of rounds for it, this is the only gun that we need to use against these G-mutants. They all fall stupid fast. If he looks like he's about to uh, start to spit out the smaller G embryos, then try firing at his head. But if he spits out a G, if he starts spits out a G embryo, then that's when you want to run backwards and start targeting the smaller G embryos because he can't really muster up any more G embryos that fast. Third slidey boy is gonna come out of the tunnel here, but uh, fuck him. We're just gonna go ahead and go. There's another Mr. Raccoon right there. Again, shot it to demonstrate. But I have too many things in my inventory. I need five slots to be able to pick up the spark shot, the queen plug, the king plug, and the rook plug. So there's the queen plug. to poke his head a couple more times. There are 15 Mr. Raccoons total split across all four scenarios. I'm getting rid of those uh, spark shot cartridges because I actually don't need them. Spark shot in general is uh, good for dealing a lot of damage over a slow time span, but uh, I think it's only discernible use is uh, possibly during a speed run. So it's not really, uh, not really much incentive to hold on to that compared to holding on to the uh, submachine gun bullets for now, especially since those are a lot faster DPS against uh, G2 and these G units. So whenever uh, the G-Mutants do a football tackle and then they go into the water like that, they actually will not uh, stun you whenever they come out of the water, like he did just there.
Yeah, I think I'm about to realize in a second that I didn't get the stupid rook plug. Pretty classic Carsey conundrum. But that's okay, because we don't actually need these uh, submachine gun bullets either for quite a while. Could actually pick up the white gunpowders there, maybe, but I haven't really figured out where to combine those for maximum efficiency. Would have been nice to have some more submachine gun rounds, probably. Especially since in this run I like to use the submachine gun bullets on G2. I think using submachine gun on G2 is probably like the simplest strat, all things considered. Where Leon would normally use the uh, flamethrower, the submachine gun is probably better against G2 for Claire. Something to think about for whenever I decide to do uh, hardcore uh, no HUD, no damage runs. So we're going to stick the Rook in the center slot, the Knight in the top slot, and the Bishop on the bottom slot, and... On the right hand side, we will have the king in the right slot and the queen in the upper right slot. Her or is it the other way around? On my way. Man, I don't even remember. So upon triggering uh, Birkin to drop his claw over here, we're just going to pop a flame round right in there. It's going to bust down the shutter and we're going to just go right on by and pop another flame there. He, uh, he clipped. We want him to start charging at us while we're at the end of that wall over there so that he'll slash and he'll miss and hit that wall instead. that button there. We'll throw this uh, flash grenade, do a flame round, then equip the Mac 11. Now he is down though. We're going to grab the submachine gun ammo here. And I got to wait for him to get back up again. And while we're doing so, going to pop another flame round into him. He'll get up again. Then we're going to throw another flash throw another grenade and we're gonna push this 
and use the rest of our submachine gun ammo on him. Oh man, I actually think I screwed the pooch on this one. No, I didn't. Okay, that was enough. That was enough damage. It's because of the flame grenades. It was Claire B where I actually had to do the backup strats against him. Because I thought I did enough damage to uh, get him in one cycle. The greatest advice with this boss was watch his eyes. When it turns red, you gotta hit on first crane. Wait, really? Is that true? Man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look into that. Sherry? Claire? Sherry, are you alright? What are you doing? I'm here to help. Sherry's been implanted. She can't be saved. Are you fucking kidding me? You're her mother. Get in here! You don't understand. William is still out there, and if I don't stop him... This conversation is over! Wait! Wait! I, I can treat her. In my lab. It's not far away. Mommy? There's not enough time. Millions of lives are at stake. Sherry, mommy loves you, sweetie. Goodbye. Are you fucking kidding me? Sherry, don't worry. I will get you whatever you need, okay? Why are you doing this? Because I care. Thank you, Claire. Ned said her lab's not far. Wait, that cable car. Hold on, Sherry. You're gonna be fine. Almost there, Sherry. Okay, so people in chat are actually telling me that uh, when Birkin's big old shoulder okay. eye is red, Cable car. it means that uh, you can get him in one crane. Well, I didn't know that. Good to know. Just fine. Okay. Better check everything. There's no turning back. This tram is bound for nest. Do not exit until the final destination. fine without me so I came along and got you all sorts of trouble I have something of yours 
I don't want it. Really? Why not? It's so pretty. Uh, it's from my mom. For my birthday last year. Uh, all I really wanted was for her to be home more. I know it seems like your mom doesn't care, but... Uh, hey. Uh, Sherry, come uh, here. Hang in there, okay? Now, arriving at Nest. Uh, it's okay. I've got you. Come on. Uh. I'm getting you treatment. Hold on, Sherry. It's okay. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. Welcome to Nest. Enjoy. be something here. Antiviral agent. That's it. That's gotta be it. Hmm. Hey. Hey, Sherry. I gotta go. You stay right here, though, okay? I'll be back soon. I promise. The automated nest white alert is on the computer there. It is a clear exclusive file. There's some flame rounds there and the map to the north side of the lab is there as well. Doing a little housekeeping on my weapons over here. A sixth grenade here. Getting rid of these uh, extra submachine gun bullets to pick up the uh, pick up the cartridge. Oh no! There's another Mr. Raccoon on the pedestal there. to go ahead and get rid of this guy. Don't actually think I needed that. But I'm kind of deliberating here what I want to throw away. And actually getting rid of the knife was probably the best idea in the situation because flash grenades generally make better defense items at this point in the run, especially now that uh, I have something that kills zombies in one shot. So there's the electronic chip. We're going to combine that with the bracelet. The high voltage condenser. Combine that with the spark shot. And uh, I believe that is the last of the upgrades. Dr. 
Jelly, your presence is urgent. Chief Cartwright in the East area. Nap room log is there, and also the ID wristbands file. And on the uh, dead body over here, there is a special forces so, recording. Antiviral agents in the west area. So now we can punch the switch and head into the uh, east area. We gotta start to try to hold on to flame rounds here so that we can use those to deal with the uh, IV monsters. We'll combine the uh, large gunpowder with uh, the white gunpowder we got here in order to get a lot more acid rounds. Right about here is where we really want to start saving up acid rounds. We need about we need about 30 for the boss. The codes over here are 3123 and 2067. Dispensing solution now. Definitely don't need those needle cartridges anymore. They're really only good for killing zombies at this point. Although they do get rid of the uh, G-Mutants in one shot as well. There's just no G-Mutants for the rest of the game. Then there's the uh, P-Epsilon Synthesis document. We'll use the dispersal cartridge here. And the solution to the puzzle Adjust is red, green, blue, red, green... Blue, red, green. So it's just one cycle of red, green, then blue, red, green, blue, red, green. Eight presses and it's done. I was doing a little bit of experimentation with damage here. I used one acid round and one flame round to see if it would actually uh, torch the Groots any faster, but it actually does not. I think you would have to blow out all of the uh, all of the bulbs on the Groot in order to uh, in order to be able to burn it on the next flame round. Either way. Now we got two large gunpowders. I'll pick those up last. Those flame rounds there. First I'm just gonna... Melt the heads off these zombies. Just three of them. The fourth one there actually does not get up. So we don't gotta worry about him. 
I'm going to start walking over here at that panel on the wall on the right. If you start running after that, then the liquor will be immediately aggroed whenever he pops down, so... Doing that will avoid that altogether. Seriously? Let's pop the head off that dude, and then we'll pop the head off this dude. And then we'll pop the head off this bitch right here. Then we'll combine the white gunpowder with the large gunpowder. There's somebody's notice talking about burning the Groots, yada, yada, yada. Now we can head back out into this area now that we have the signal modulator and go get our final side pack as well as the final Mr. Raccoon. And another file. Switch that over to Muff, and then... It's a little tougher to do this with twin stacks. There's our hip patch. Hip pouch, there's the final Mr. Raccoon. Pop that zombie's head off. And then we can finish off the rest of the uh, east area. So by going back into the save room upstairs and coming back down here, it actually uh, puts both of these liquors in more favorable positions and they're both just like chilling on the walls instead. We got one inventory slot free for us to grab these three flame rounds here, which we're going to be using against Groots later. Actually, yeah, the, 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 the spark shot actually isn't bad to use against Groots either. It'll incapacitate them in one shot. After using the signal modulator there, we're going to go to cool off the uh, herbicide. For the ivy, hit him with one acid round and he'll fall to the floor. Then hit him with one flame to burn him. I tried that before, but it didn't work. Oh, but maybe he didn't fall the first time. Maybe it's maybe I gotta blow up more bulbs in order for it to happen. 
Welcome back, Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee's email right there. Man, what's with my audio? Did I have surround sound turned on or something? I thought I turned off. I thought it's just linear PCM2 channel. That's how it should have been. So there's the dispersal cartridge with the herbicide. Now we can head back into the larger laboratory and use the herbicide. And right about now, we're just going to slowly walk along and head over to the save room over here to the right. Because it's now open. Combine those uh, acid rounds right there. Now we have 29 acid rounds, including the one that should be in the grenade launcher, unless it ejected back into my inventory. You shot him with the flame round while he was standing, so that's why he didn't burn. Okay. I'll check it again next time. So this group's gonna get back up. We're just gonna pop him with a flame. Pop that one with a flame too. Both of them should just burn right up. go ahead and burn the shit out of those guys while I still had the rounds. Get them all out of the way. One flame round is enough to drop one. And uh, if you have them grouped together, you can actually burn them with the same grenade. Also, in case you were wondering... Uh, so much for the weed infestation. Flames from Claire's grenade Warning. launcher actually do you not cause damage to Claire. But if you Your stand in a fire for a prolonged period of time, Claire will die. It doesn't actually cause a single point of damage to Claire. There's one more file on the uh, podium that I actually missed.
I'd say you need about seven, eight grenades or so in order to be able to take out the final boss. Rather G4 without any uh, without any issues. Second to last file is William Birkin's inbox. You can go to the right, grab this high grade gunpowder here. Combining with the large gunpowder, we'll have 34 acid rounds. As long as we don't miss any, we will be good to go. G2's first claw also doesn't cause damage, right? I actually do not know Vinegar, but I will, uh, I could, I could check. I'm pretty sure that it does, though. I also go through the trouble of not getting hit by said claw. So I wouldn't actually know. Why am I heading back this way? Oh, right, so I can grab the uh, blue gunpowder over here and get a little bit of extra acid rounds. Yeah, I got a good roll. I got three acid rounds that time. So no preparation really is needed aside from just have a metric shit ton of acid rounds for this fight because acid rounds will cause hit stun on every shot if you know exactly when to shoot. So now we got 38 acid rounds and that is enough acid rounds to be able to completely stun lock Birkin at center mass. Antiviral agent. Gotta get back to Sherry. The research diary is the last file in the game. I should have killed him while I had the chance. I don't know why, I just... I couldn't do it. He was your husband. Honestly, we were more married to our work than each other. 
But what about Sherry? How could you just leave her all alone while Raccoon City burned to hell? I couldn't let my daughter grow up in a world with a G virus in it. But that's no excuse. <laughs> So he's going to get back up. How do I describe when it is good to shoot him? Whenever he like lunges forward, like whenever his shoulders just sort of like lunge forward slightly, like he's going to go to a knee, then he's going to get up. And then he does like a little thing to like regain his composure after that. But it's like this thing he does with his head. Actually, it's like pretty much the very first frame that he starts walking is when you can start shooting him again. Just uh, make sure that you do it before he attacks. And uh, you pretty much have control over him the whole time in doing so. So we just triggered phase two. Uh, you can actually do a little bit more damage to him here and there by just simply shooting the eyes. Ah, but I shot too early. That's what happens when you shoot too early. He just tanks it. But he did like his four piece. Now he's trying to give us the biscuit. But uh, we did exactly enough damage to stop him from going to get the biscuit. He's uh, completely invincible while he's uh, throwing down this panel over here. I shot too early again. Does that, it's just best to straight up dodge that attack. And the fight's over. That's how it works. Target has been neutralized. Ending quarantine. Before we uh, head over to get Sherry, we gotta get uh, two flash grenades. There's some magnum ammo right there as well. There's a first aid spray if you want it. Service lift is now operational. There is a box of needle cartridges over here. 
Another hand grenade in the room somewhere. I'm pretty sure I picked that up. I think that was like the first thing I picked up. Then another flash grenade, and that is enough. Got to get back to Sherry. gonna be all right she'll be weak for a little while but yes she's free of the g-virus did you hear that Sherry, can you walk faster? I don't want to rush you, but we have to go. Let's get the hell out of here. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Use the central LBO to evacuate immediately to the bottom level train platform. Claire? 
I get you out of this place. So there's really uh, nothing stopping us from getting to the final boss from here. Because Sherry is uh, coming along with us, these Groots over here actually don't get up quite so fast, and Sherry just like runs right through them anyhow. Because of how slow they get up, you can just run right through them. It's like, don't worry, don't even worry about them. Actually, Claire makes it to the train first, because she's the one who gets it running. So... Those brutes are asleep for her when she runs by, but they're awake for Leon. Of course. Stupid thing's locked. Hold on! Sherry, what are you- I think I can open it from the other side! God damn it, your turn sucks! Trying a little something there. Should actually torch that guy, hopefully. No, actually, it did not. That zombie just has 50 HP, so he will die in just about one shot from any weapon. Sherry, you hanging in there? I'm right behind you. Had a girl. The girl almost out of here. Worth a try. We don't need any knives for the final boss, so just dropping one. We gotta get this train moving. I need you to stay right here, okay? Okay. I promise I won't move. Good. Be careful. Always. Eight minutes until detonation. Grab the minigun here, too. Though, really, I recommend just equipping grenades and unequipping the minigun. Get to Y in a minute. Okay. Alright. Did something. Okay. Alright, it's working. Clear! What? Leon? You're down here too? Yeah. But the whole place is coming down. Look, you need to get out. Fast. I know. I found a way out. I think... I think we can all make it. Where are you now? Claire, are you still there? Leon? I'm sorry, you're breaking up. Don't worry about me. Just get out of here. Leon! Leon!
So I unequipped the minigun so that Claire will actually hold up grenades faster. Like she just pulls them straight out and we don't have to worry about putting away the minigun in order to draw grenades. And uh, in throwing grenades, all of the eyes actually all respawn at the same time. So that makes us that makes it way easy to just use grenades to pop all of them all at once. But uh, G4 is based specifically on uh, popping his eyes and not based on uh, and not based on damage. Well, it is based on damage, but specifically it's popping the eyes that actually cause like all of the damage necessary because just standard gunfire doesn't do it alone. You have to pop the eyes. Uh, the trick to fighting him safely is to just stay on either end of the train and uh, if he charges then just go then just start running. Just start running the opposite direction. But you have to do it from uh, one of the sides of the train because if you don't then it's very likely that when he rounds the corner he'll hit you. But that's it. Pretty quick, pretty easy fight. Just make sure that the grenade hits and all the eyes spawn back in and it goes fast. First thing you want to do when we get out of here. I want to see where you live. Good. Sigh. Take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> really? Not bad. Oh, yeah. Claire! Leon! It's so good to see you. I told you we'd make it, didn't I? <sighs> you did. Anyway, that was uh, Claire first, 100%, no box, no save, no damage. Getting S plus in a standard mode run will not unlock anything special, but uh, standard mode is still really good for collecting all of the uh, collectibles in the game. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if there's anything that I missed in this playthrough, I will definitely get it in Claire B because like I said, it tracks globally across the actual system file and not across your save files, whether you get 100% or not, especially counting towards the achievement. So keep an eye out for my 
Leon B and Claire B, no save, no damage, 100% no box runs. Man, that's a fucking mouthful. It's going to be real fun making video thumbnails for those later. Anyhow, if you uh, liked what you see, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, go to my YouTube channel and check out my playlists with all the other games that I play, especially of Resident Evil. This was recorded around uh, early December 2019. You probably copped this game during a uh, Steam sale or something like that. Shoutouts to you guys. Shoutouts to the second wave over here. If you want to support my content financially, be sure to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. For as little as $1, you get early access to all of my videos, days, sometimes weeks in advance. $5 tiers get to look at work in progress runs, especially if they are segmented runs, segmented projects. As of this recording, I am currently working on a Silent Hill 3 no damage run. So you could actually view that early if you're a $5 supporter. Everything that I record is recorded live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. So definitely go check that out over there. I stream there full time. My usual stream times are 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And my usual days off are Sundays and Wednesdays. But I record my gameplay, I also record my commentary there as well. Say hi, Twitch chat. So anyways, I think that's about all I got. I'll uh, see you guys next video. Thank you very much for watching.